right for the lead. There it is. The Kansas City Chiefs are Super Bowl champions. We'll have all the highlights and reactions just ahead. And taking a live look outside with live cam on a Monday morning, the day after the Super Bowl. Thank you very much for being with us on Good Morning San Antonio. It is February 13th. So. Good morning. So happy to have you with us, RJ. Yeah, very excited to be here. Again, my condolences to Max Massey, <laughs> our in-house Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles fan. But uh, that was a great game to watch. It was. Um, did you stay up and watch? I did. I actually wait, made it all the way through. Just wanted to get through halftime. And the game was too close. I was, no, too, I was enjoying I was like, it too much. I was seen this. Yeah. <laughs> Been yeah. working this shift for a long time. <laughs> Gotta go to bed. Today, so. Talk to me in an hour. We'll yeah. see how we feel. Yeah, if you heard a loud moan, that was Max when they kicked the field goal. <laughs> oh! Yeah, yeah. Wow. Reverber yeah. Reverberating throughout the city. So, <laughs> so um, obviously, Mahomes came back. Mahomes came back, and he, I th he was near perfect in the second half. Right. Yeah, and so he wins his second MVP. Because he looked yeah. like he was hurting. Oh, yeah, yeah, at, at halftime, yeah. Inside. I don't know what Port happened during shots. the halftime. Yeah, there yeah, we fine. go. <laughs> <laughs> Something anyway. happened at halftime. <laughs> Let's talk about the weather. Of course, yeah. we uh, started off really beautiful yesterday morning. Clouds moved on in here. And we do have plenty of clouds hanging around here right now. 43 degrees in town, 30s in the hill country. So, yeah, it is chilly. We're actually a little bit below normal right now. We're not going to drop that much just because we do have a pretty good cloud cover. Although I saw the moon trying to squeeze through some of those clouds earlier this morning. The air is still fairly dry out there, but the humidity will be coming up later on today and overnight. More on that in just a couple of minutes, of course. Mold is on the low side. Look, what's not showing up? Mountain cedar. We may be finally done with the season. All right, this morning, temperatures, again, we stay pretty steady over the next couple of hours. 42 degrees, most of the cloudy skies. Then wind is going to be picking up somewhat out of the southeast, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Most of the cloudy skies, we make it all the way up to 70. There is a chance for a couple of showers later on tonight and to start off the day tomorrow. The roller coaster this week is going to be, or the, that we've been experiencing, is going to be continuing this week. Very warm the first half of the week, and then another really, really potent front moving on through here. Any decent rain, a couple of showers tonight, but any decent rain, Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Mike. We are learning the bot. We are learning more about that body that was found after a mobile home fire this past weekend. It was it belonged to a four year old child. That's according to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. The identity of the child has not been released at this time. Firefighters responded to the scene just after nine o'clock yesterday morning on Shepherd Road. That's near Fowler Road in Southwest Bear County. When they got there, that mobile home mobile home was taken over completely by flames. They learned quickly someone was trapped inside, but were unable to get them out because that fire was so intense. They first had to focus on getting that fire out. Deputies were uh, with the Bear County Sheriff's Office were also involved in that ongoing rescue effort and uh, they got injured as well. We have a deputy who suffered uh, burn injuries and two were treated, transported and treated for smoke inhalation. Well, two other people who live in that mobile home, they were able to make it out and where they were taken to a nearby hospital for severe burns. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Taking a look at some of your morning headlines and of course the Super Bowl taking a live look at Kansas City this morning. It's pretty calm right now, but I'm sure they partied well into the night. The Kansas City Chiefs are Super Bowl champions for the second time in four years. KC football fans celebrating a big win. They definitely are in the team. Their team beat the Eagles last night, 38 to 35. Yeah, it was a great game and it happened in Arizona. The second straight Super Bowl decided by just a field goal with a lot of twists and turns along the way. Here's ABC's Andrew Denbert. It was one of the most tightly contested Super Bowls in history and it all came down to one kick. Butker up, got it! With that field goal, the Chiefs beating the Eagles 38 to 35. Patrick Mahomes named MVP, his second Super Bowl win in four years. Two in four years, is that the dynasty? Uh, I'm not going to say dynasty yet, we're not done. Okay. So I'm not going to say dynasty yet. But it was anything but easy. The two teams going tit for tat in the first half. Hurts on a quarterback draw. No one to go, the ball's loose. The Chiefs tying the game at 14 after returning this fumble by Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts for a touchdown. Both teams also contending with a slippery field. Well, look at the pile of cleats there. Hurts changing cleats midway through the game and the Eagles place kicker nearly twisting his ankle on this kickoff. He escaped injury, but Patrick Mahomes, after this tackle, did not. 
and Mahomes is slow getting up. He appeared to re-injure the ankle he hurt three weeks ago, but the Chiefs, down by 10, came out swinging in the second half, scoring on every drive in the third and fourth quarters. Quick throw, Tony's got it, Tony walks in! This touchdown pass in the beginning of the fourth quarter, giving the Chiefs their first lead of the game and marking the first time the Eagles had not led in the entire postseason. The Chiefs would extend their lead to eight, but the Eagles weren't done yet. Jalen Hurts with his rushing touchdown, followed by a two-point conversion to tie it at 35. But in the end, the Chiefs would drive into field goal range. Lofting one, end zone incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster couldn't catch up. There's a flag at the 10. Helped by this controversial holding call, which gave them the chance to run down the clock and kick the go-ahead field goal. The Eagles with one final play, but the Hail Mary coming up short. And the Kansas City Chiefs have won Super Bowl 57. The post-game tone in the city of brotherly love appeared to be rather upbeat given the close loss. While in Kansas City, Chiefs fans celebrating their victory. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. This morning, at least 33,000 people have now been killed by that powerful earthquake in Turkey and Syria. Earlier today, rescue crews pulled out a 40-year-old woman from the wreckage of a building a week after two powerful earthquakes hit that area. However, reports of rescues are coming in less often as the time since the quake hit reaches the limits of the human body's ability to survive without water, especially in sub-freezing temperatures. Experts now say the likelihood of finding more people alive is very, very small now. Russian forces over the weekend continued to shell Ukrainian cities amid a grinding push to seize more land in the eastern part of the country. One person was killed and another person was wounded in the southeastern city. In Ukraine's second largest city, one person was wounded after three Russian S-300 missiles hit infrastructure facilities overnight. The attacks come as Russian forces push to take over more lands in the eastern part of the country. Ukrainian officials say that Moscow is having trouble mounting a broad offensive in the area. The U.S. military shot down another unidentified object yesterday at President Biden's order. The Pentagon says the craft was flying at 20,000 feet, this time over Michigan's Upper Peninsula when U.S. fighter jets took it down. Officials say the octagon-shaped object was not a military threat, but rather a flight hazard. This was one of the, the third one that has been shot in the U.S. in as many days and the fourth in just over a week. The, the Department of Defense says the object shot down Friday and Saturday did not resemble the suspected Chinese spy balloon taken down last week. It's 437 and 46 degrees. And still ahead, man, the San Antonio Spurs back in action tonight against the Cleveland Cavs. How the team is trying to avoid a record they really don't want to have. And now that the NFL is over, it's time for the XFL. We take a look ahead at the San Antonio Brahma's first game in the Alamo Dome. And taking a quick look at traffic on a Monday morning, maybe some people <laughs> staying in a little bit. Maybe had a little bit uh, too much fun last night. I think a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just be, I mean, come on. It's quiet out there I right mean, now. it is 4.30 this morning. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> taking a live look outside with live cam. Another chilly start. Uh, oh, yeah, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Don't okay, I'm going to say Mike has our Valentine's <laughs> Day forecast when we come back. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Now that the NFL season has wrapped up, it's time to switch over to the XFL. That's right, that'll be you there. The San Antonio fans who have missed out on the Commanders, remember them, have a new team to cheer for, the San Antonio Brahmas. The team has been working out in the Dallas-Fort Worth area this season, but they're going to be playing their home games at the Alamo Dome. This past week, head coaches Heinz Ward and some of the players came down to meet fans over at Alamo Beer Company. We asked Coach Ward what he picked up from two head coaches he played for in his NFL career with the Steelers, Bill Cower and Mike Tomlin. I just learned so much from them and, and the approach to the game and the mindset. So me being in Pittsburgh for so many years is all I know. So I've seen success. I know what it looks like. And now getting the opportunity to one, learn from two great coaches, but also put my own style and flavor to it. So um, that's why they say I'm a player's coach, because <laughs> I know what it feels like to have dead legs <laughs> at practice. So sometimes you got to listen to your body. You got to pull back a little bit. And I've done that. And they've been so appreciative of that. And it, it's helped our team uh, kind of get to where we want to go. So I told them my job is to make sure I get them to the party. And now when it's time to, when they're at the party, it's time to show out and, and let the fans know all the hard work that they put into is going to pay off. 
All right, the Brahmas will kick off the new XFL season Sunday at 2 p.m. at the Alamo Dome when they host St. Louis, and you can watch it right here live on KSAT 12. Well, the longest losing streak in Spurs history is 13 games, and this was set back in the 88-89 season. Well, our current Spurs are one loss away from tying that record after Saturday night's road loss to the Atlanta Hawks. Their best chance to snap that skid came on Friday night with a double overtime loss to the Detroit Pistons. But with all the changes made at the trade deadline, the Spurs starting lineup was brand new and unable to capitalize on an opportunity against one of the worst teams in the Eastern Conference. So rubbing a little bit more salt in the wound, you see him right there, DeJounte Murray, helped Atlanta stick a dagger in the Spurs in the second half of Saturday night's game. He went off for 18 points against his former team, but regardless of his chatter on social media, the Spurs are still keeping touch with DeJounte. I was going through a shooting slump early in the year, and um, I think it, it, it was like right after my game, he touched me. I'm not going to watch me, you know what I'm saying? Keep shooting, you fine. You know, it happened to the best of you know, and um, you know, it, it felt, as you know, he's in Atlanta, I'm in San Antonio, but it feel like, you know, we right there together. It's no different, you know, he's still, still that big brother figure to me. When someone like that, you know, moves on uh, for whatever reason, you always remember him, you always stay in touch and uh, wish, wish them well. He was fantastic for us. He's a sweet man. Well, the Spurs continue the road trip tonight at the Cleveland Cavaliers game time there, 6 p.m. Then Wednesday, they travel to Charlotte to take on the Hornets. And then the NBA All-Star Weekend festivities begin Friday with the All-Star game being held in less than a week. All right, let's head down to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Two rounds of bull riding yesterday from the second bracket. In the afternoon round, Trey Kinsey gets thrown off Billy Dean in four seconds in. And then one of the bullfighters gets run over. He'd be okay, thankfully. The best ride of the session was Maverick Potter on top of Doodlin Dalton. Yes, these are real names here. He goes the full eight seconds and makes it look pretty easy there. Congrats. That's a score of 84.5, 2.5 points ahead of second and third then in the night session only two riders went the full distance and jacob scott omera had the highest score with an 82 riding william james george yes three names there sarah for the bull rodeo is back in action tonight at the stock show and rodeo you went out to the rodeo yesterday <laughs> i was there saturday oh you're there yeah saturday. I, didn't, I, I was just on the grounds okay. but didn't actually get to see the rodeo. i plan to go out there this week though okay should be a lot of fun I love, I love, I love watching bull. It's like <laughs> yeah. thrilling at the same time. You're like, ooh. Yeah, good times. <laughs> All right, it's 445 and 46 degrees. Up next, a first look at a one-on-one -on -one interview with Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin on his remarkable recovery. Welcome back. Michael Strahan has two big Super Bowl interviews coming up this morning on Good Morning America. ABC's Rena Rory has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Michael Strahan's all-access Super Bowl interviews. Did doctors ever come to you and say, you know, this could have gone another way? First, Michael's going one-on-one -on -one with Buffalo Bills player yeah. Damar Hamlin on his remarkable recovery, made even more poignant by this moment at last night's game. Buffalo Bills safety, Damar Hamlin! And then... All about Rihanna. A lot of your fans, you know what they want. More. More. <laughs> they want they want more. They want a new album. They want new music. Yeah, I know. Can you can you update us on that? Before her showstopper, she opened up to Michael about performing once again in front of all of the lights. One morning, two big interviews. It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA first look, I'm Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Every all right, taking a quick look at traffic here, traffic authority, Loop 1604 at Kitty Hawk, things looking pretty good in that area. 281 in Hildebrand, so far so good this morning on the day after the Super Bowl, so don't expect too many people on the roads right now. <laughs> I know, I, it's, I don't understand how it's not a national holiday. I Should did be. get a kick out of that, the halftime show, the staging mm -hmm. of it, and how yeah. they suspended those platforms when the roof was open at the stadium. Also so, terrifying, can you imagine being up that high and well, they had safety and lines on. So, uh, All right. still, <laughs> still it's, yeah, a little worrisome. There. Favorite commercial just in the first half because I went to bed, but 
Ooh, favorite commercial. The Duncan. The Duncan. Duncan with yeah, with I would have to agree with that one too. I also like the John Travolta one in the second half. I thought that was good. It was a T-Mobile one. Okay. John Travolta back with Zach Braff and Donald Faison, the guys from Scrubs. And we were just yeah. talking about the, was it Tubi? Tubi, yes. That one had everyone a lot of people. thinking that they were all sitting on the remote. <laughs> yes. Very relatable. Which good job. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> and the one that didn't make any sense was the Pepsi ad. Am I acting? Is this good or is it just acting? It's like, yeah. why are you that didn't connect your product? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Anywho, there's our analysis. <laughs> we'll We're experts, on, you of know. course. <laughs> yes. All right. Yesterday started off very cold morning. Got down to 33 here in town. It was a gorgeous, gorgeous sunrise yesterday. Then those clouds moved on in, and that kept us on the cool-ish side. Today's going to be warmer, and that's the, the trend the first half of the week. So we've got some clouds out there right now, and 43 degrees, 30s in parts of the hill country. Pretty consistent temperatures. We are just a few notches below normal right now. Now, we won't drop down that much more just given the fact that we do have that cloud cover, even though we have relatively dry air as of right now. But that's going to be changing as far as dew point temperatures later on today as well as tonight. So we go on through the morning. And as far as a little sprinkle or two, uh, really kind of doubt that at all. But once we get into this afternoon, we are going to make it up to 70. Then we'll have a few more showers trying to move on in here late tonight and then in the overnight hours. Here's the computer model. So we keep a lot of clouds around today. And again, this model in particular doesn't try and scare up anything as far as any sprinkles this morning. Plus the air is too dry that anything would reach the ground. Uh, we keep clouds around tonight. Then here come those few little light showers in the overnight hours and starting off tomorrow. It's not going to be any big deal really. Just a couple of them out there and that'll be about it. And this will be as the next front moves through. We are going to clear out somewhat, so we will have more sunshine in the afternoon tomorrow. And despite the fact that there is a front moving on through here, we're actually going to be warmer tomorrow because it's basically just a dry line. So here's the humidity coming back in tonight, late this afternoon tonight. Here comes the drier air and that drier air moves into the hill country first and it's going to be very, very windy prior to the all the dry air moving across the area. So what that's doing then is prompting a wind advisory. It's already been issued, goes into effect at midnight tomorrow morning up through noon tomorrow for the hill country. So that front moves through, first of all, up in the hill country and it's going to be westerly winds and that's why we're going to be heating up. A lot of times you get these southwest westerly winds, even though you have a front moving on through here uh, with that dry air coming in, that really warms things up. So that will be the trend. Then first half of the week and we get even warmer on Wednesday, then another more potent colder front moves on through here. 62 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. Sunshine here and there, but just kind of leaning more toward the cloudier side. 70 for a high temperature, so just a few degrees above normal. And then a couple of showers tonight, tomorrow, a couple of showers around the area in the morning, one or two of them. And then we warm up 75, pushing at 80 on Wednesday. Then the next front moves on through here. And it looks like Thursday is going to be one of those kind of backwards days. We'll be warmer early, early in the morning. Temperatures will drop throughout the day. Very windy on Thursday as well. And then staying cooler through the first half of the weekend. Then we go back to the 70s. So there's this roller coaster again. <laughs> It's really just, you know, mm -hmm. all over the place. But no yeah. real significant rain. I mean, mm. a couple of showers and that'll be about it. Yeah, I saw you push that out earlier, Mike, on the Weather Authority app. It was weather, roller coaster weather. Yeah, perfect way to describe what's been our February. Mm. So which, which is nice when we get the fronts moving through every couple of days. That but nice. man, for the yeah. past few weeks, it's been like huh, up, down, up, down, <laughs> left, right, sideways. So. <laughs> And tomorrow's Valentine's Day. It is. Oh, Forget. man. Another reminder there. Okay, Sarah, uh, time now is 453 and 48 degrees outside on your Monday morning. Up next, a big honor for Harry Styles. Plus, find out how the re-release of Titanic did at the box office this weekend. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. Magic Mike takes the number one spot at the box office but that's not really saying much. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. I do the visionary artist, Magic Mike. Magic Mike's last dance bowed in first at the box office on a slow Super Bowl weekend. So slow, all it took was 8.2 million bucks for the third Magic Mike movie to do it. The way of water connects all things. Avatar The Way of Water rose a spot to second, earning 6.9 million in week eight. Listen to me, I've got you. I won't let go. With the 25th anniversary theatrical re-release of Titanic taking third with $6.4 million, it was a very good weekend for filmmaker James Cameron. 
In fact, with 2009's Avatar still the highest grossing movie of all time worldwide, Cameron's in the enviable position of watching The Way of Water and Titanic trade the third and fourth spots on that list, with barely four million bucks separating them. The man that just does not stop. Harry Styles. Harry Styles swept the Brit Awards Saturday night, the UK's Grammys equivalent, winning the four top trophies, including Artist of the Year. And Peter Gabriel is 73 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. It's 458 and 46 degrees. The U.S. military fighter jet shot down another object in the skies over North America this weekend. Up next, why it was shot down even though it did not pose a military threat. Plus, how a local organization is sending much-needed aid to the people of Turkey and Syria hit hard by that deadly earthquake. And taking a look at the roads this morning with TransGuide, things looking pretty smooth so far as we get set to go on a Monday morning. Just saw Stephen Cavazos walk into the studio. He has the very latest on your Monday morning traffic around the San Antonio area. Be right back. Live from KSAT 12. Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A fourth unidentified object was shot out of the sky over the weekend. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, the security concerns for the U.S. All right, it's Monday, the day after the Super Bowl, taking a live look outside with live cam. Things looking pretty good out there. We'll talk to Mike just a little bit to see what is ahead for our weather. Good morning, everyone. It is February 13th. Hanging out with y'all in Good Morning San Antonio this morning. In for Max Massey, who unfortunately is probably hurting a little bit today. Yeah, it was. It, Max was going to be in for Mark Austin. Right. And mm -hmm. now you're you're like back, really like backup quarterback I know, this yeah, morning. Yeah, I got the call. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah off the bench. Yeah. Off the bench Max is much. Max is healing from that injury uh, this morning. But hey, congrats to. Sarah Spivey yeah. and AZ and Burmese, all of our mm -hmm. Chiefs fans Absolutely. here at KSAT. I know that I think Max is going to have to wear Sarah's jersey oh, wow. as a Ooh. bet. That was nice. a bet that was I made. I like that, yeah. And Mike, are you a Chiefs fan at all, Mike? Did you watch the game? I watched the first half, as I usually do, but I didn't realize that Max was scheduled to be here this morning. He was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> Yeah, no, we figured it out. <laughs> a little, little Super Bowl flu, huh? Anyway, um, no, go Lions. Next year, just wait. <laughs> 43 degrees right now. I got a lot of clouds hanging around here and dew points at 37. So relatively dry air, um, but enough cloud cover out there that we're not going to be dropping down all that much uh, throughout the rest of the morning. Then we warm up all the way up to 70. So we start off a little bit below normal, get a little bit above normal later on in the day. The aquifer went up three tenths of a foot over the weekend and the allergens. Only thing showing up is mold. No mountain cedar is showing up, which is very good news. But of course, you know what's right next in line, that lovely oak pollen as well. Here's the water vapor imagery. This shows the moisture in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere and everything coming in here from the west. And with all this moisture upstairs, this is what is then equating into cloud cover out there. And we're not going to be seeing a whole lot of sunshine throughout the day. Limited amounts, a little bit peeking through here and there. Mostly cloudy. It is chilly out there. So, yeah, you need a jacket, but it's going to warm up quite a bit, despite the fact we have all those clouds, because we've got a pretty good southeasterly wind, which will continue continue to pick up as the day rolls on and we will see a couple of showers. I wouldn't get real excited about rain chances, but a couple of showers late tonight and overnight into the early portion of tomorrow. Then we're going to clear out somewhat in the afternoon. It's really going to warm up and it's going to be very, very windy tomorrow as well. Wind advisories have already been issued for parts of the hill country throughout the first half of the day tomorrow, and then it gets even warmer on Wednesday preceding the next much stronger cold front, which will move on through here, and that's going to knock temperatures down at least through the first portion of this upcoming weekend. So up, down, up, down. Rain chances eh, leaning more toward the downside. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, are you happy with the outcome of yesterday's game? Even I'm happy with Rihanna's performance. Yes, okay. I am, Mike. Uh, the game was it was okay. All right, let's get a look here at the roadways. For those of you that are getting the chance to sleep in, maybe just waking up right now, this is really what you can expect for your post Super Bowl commute. Really not a lot going on, and that's great because a lot, a lot of folks, uh, a lot of folks are probably sleeping in, getting to enjoy the uh, Chiefs win. And hey, maybe some like Max Massey are hurting a little bit and just sleeping in, trying to move on. But right now things are moving along just fine here at 35 at Ben Zingelman. You can see it right behind me. Uh, traffic's moving along there also at 35 at Salado Creek. The 
morning commute is looking like any ordinary Monday morning commute would. No issues to report as of yet, so that's some good news. So we take you to the map. Lots of green out there, but we know that there will be a plenty of construction taking place. Several road closures. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the newscast, but if you plan on heading into San Antonio this early in the morning, the drive's not going to be too bad. That journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound looks to be about 24 minutes right now, so perfect opportunity to take advantage of that. 28 minutes. No need to hurry if you're traveling in from Bull Verde along 281 southbound and 25 minutes along I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels, so not too awful there either. Let's get it back here on Transguide. US 9 90 at General McMillan, 37 at Loop 410. We have about 20 Transguide cameras to the left of me, and all of them show a lot of pavement out there. Maybe one or two folks making their way on by. I'll continue to track the roads closely, and again, have an update on those road closures that will be coming up in the next few minutes or so. RJ Sarah. Thank you very much, Stephen. New this morning, a Super Bowl party ends with a person shot with a shotgun on San Antonio's west side overnight. So this happened just after 11 p.m. near the area of West Cesar Chavez and San Luis. San Antonio police say officers found a man on the ground with a birdshot shotgun wound to, uh, to his leg. Police say it happened during what appeared to be a backyard cookout. SABD says no one was cooperating with officers. However, the man was taken to the hospital. His condition hasn't officially been released. We are continuing to follow local efforts to help people in Turkey and Syria following that deadly earthquake. This morning, the death toll is now up to at least 36,000 people killed. Here at home, the Raindrop Foundation was able to send people's donations through the Turkish embassy in Houston yesterday. They're continuing to collect things like baby formula, heating elements, and monetary donations to help those survivors of the quake to rebuild their lives. Ferhat Ozerk says he knows he how long the recovery took following that 1999 earthquake in Turkey, and he hopes that they will send, that this will show the people of Syria and Turkey that they're not alone. With our help, hopefully they will be able to, with our humanity's help, we will be able to, you know, um, help them to invigorate what they have, you know, what they had before. So far, they've raised more than $800,000. Their goal is to get to $1 million. We have that link on ksat.com where you can donate. The U.S. military shooting down yet another high-altitude object, this one over the Great Lakes in Michigan. The fourth object shot out of the sky by U.S. fighter jets in just eight days. ABC's Ike Jachi in Washington with the latest. This morning, new security concerns after the U.S. military shot down a fourth unidentified object flying over Michigan's Lake Huron. We continue to assess uh, every threat or potential threat unknown that approaches North America uh, with an attempt to identify it. Senior administration officials say the octagon-shaped structure was unmanned, traveling above Michigan's Upper Peninsula on Sunday at only about 20,000 feet near sensitive sites, far lower than other recent objects brought down. No early indication of surveillance capabilities on this latest object. President Biden giving the order to shoot it down out of an abundance of caution and at the recommendation of military leaders. This latest incident coming just one day after an F-22 fighter jet shot down an unidentified unmanned object over the Yukon. U.S. and Canadian officials ordering it shot down. It represented a reasonable threat to civilian aircraft. Canadian and American fighter jets were scrambled uh, and an American F-22 successfully shot down the object. Another unidentified object was shot down on Friday off the coast of Alaska. Three separate incidents in less than a week since that Chinese spy balloon was shot down off the coast of South Carolina. But senior U.S. officials say these latest three are different from that spy balloon. None appear to have a payload and all are smaller. There's a bit of a we won't get fooled again going on here. It doesn't even mean that there are more of them. We're just looking for them and so we're finding more of them. U.S. officials are looking for the wreckage shot down in the Yukon, but the ice and weather conditions are hampering their efforts. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. All right, it is 5.09, getting to 5.10 here. 45 degrees on a chilly start on your Monday. Still ahead, how Ford is preparing to into a new phase in selling its electric vehicles with a new battery plant. And up next, a doctor with UT Health San Antonio talks about the risk factors for heart disease and what we can do to lower them. 45 degrees on this day after Super Bowl Monday, 509, trying to wake up. Hey, we're all here. We all stayed up late. <laughs> yeah. 
How do you watch Rihanna? That's it. Of course. How to make it through Rihanna. <laughs> Mike will have our forecast when we come back. Welcome back. Good morning, San Antonio. February is American Heart Month, and heart health is something families around the country, around Texas, and right here at home in San Antonio need to focus on. Dr. Don Hu with the UT Health San Antonio joined us on Leading Essay this weekend to talk more about your heart health. Yes, Dr. Huey joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about what to look out for, risk factors, and how San Antonio has a serious issue that we need to address. But it is American Heart Month, so take a listen to our conversation. It can include things that are fun, such as hiking, running around with children or grandchildren, just anything that gets your heart rate up. Um, the recommendation is to have 150 minutes a week, so that would be about 30 minutes uh, over five days of moderate to intense activity. Um, heart healthy diet is very important. Again, things in moderation. It's okay to eat red meat um, and you know occasionally fried food, but in general, you want to try to avoid those. Focus on vegetables, fruits, and lean meats. We have leading essay every Sunday at 8 a.m. So we'll see you next Sunday, guys. Back to you. Thank you, Max. It's 514 and 45 degrees. And up next, when Microsoft could show off AI-powered versions of Word, PowerPoint and Outlook. Very exciting there. I don't know what that look like. <laughs> Plus, a first look at a special edition Coca-Cola inspired smartphone. Number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. Theo's nose was cause for alarm, so Dad brought Puffs Plus Lotion to save it from harm. Puffs has 50% more lotion and brings soothing relief. Don't get burned by winter nose. A nose in need deserves Puffs indeed. America's number one lotion tissue. to remember with a free piece of jewelry from Pandora. In today's Tech Fights, EV plans for one of the big three. Ford is reportedly set to announce plans for a $3.5 billion battery plant in Michigan. Automotive News says the company will reveal efforts to rapidly scale EVs to make them more accessible. Microsoft is reportedly planning to upgrade its Office apps with AI features, bringing the technology to Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook. The rollout is expected in the coming weeks. It would follow the company's recent launch of a chatbot version of its Bing search engine. And Coca-Cola has joined with the Chinese phone brand Realme for a co-branded device. The Realme 10 Pro 5G Coca-Cola edition is set to launch in India. It features a camera shutter sound that mimics the noise of a Coke can being open. Now don't worry, the sound won't be that loud. It's more of a soft drink. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> that was a soft <laughs> drink. Okay. Did you have any soft drinks yesterday during the Super Bowl? <laughs> um, um, adult drinks. Yes. During Early the Super enough. Bowl. The great thing yeah. is, is that we were talking about this on Friday, uh, the Super Bowl food, and I had promised to bring. Kibacho. I didn't want to bring this up. Yeah, but you're. Yes, it up and you right brought. Now. Yes, okay. I, I apologize, <laughs> uh, but you know what? You guys do not deserve my leftovers. I will make you something fresh. I promise. How by nice the weekend. Of you. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you, Anyways, Stephen. You know what else is nice? The roadways. Let's get a look at the post Super Bowl. Let me Smooth go man. this way here, guys, while you guys, uh, you know, focus on the news. <laughs> uh, really, things are moving along just fine here as uh, we get the commute rolling for this new week. But not a lot going on out there. But of course, although it is quiet here on the roadways, we know there will be plenty of active road closures. You can see a little bit of that scattered along our map there. Some of the areas that we try to warn you about are those busy spots where we tend to see a lot of red and yellow buildup out there. So Loop 1604 is no different. Uh, north Central uh, San Antonio, we have gas utility work that will begin tonight. And it does start at 8 in the evening, and it should wrap on Friday, February 17th. So uh, the work, again, as I mentioned, will start overnight, but should wrap hopefully by 530 in the morning. 
we will see a westbound frontage road right lane full closure right there at Rogers Ranch Parkway. But scan the QR code that's now on your screen. I just updated a full list of traffic closures that are current and that are happening right now in and around the Alamo City. So plan your commute ahead of time. Scan that QR code that will take you to our page. Get in the know before you go, Mike. But the roads are dry out here and it's a nice uh, way to start the work week. That's very good news. Hey, look at this. Oh, Stephen. <laughs> Somebody else's beautiful Whoa, uh, I can't live appetizers up for uh, for a Super Bowl. <laughs> love the creativity though yeah. with the Eagles and the Chiefs written out there in uh, in green nice. and red peppers. A beautiful, beautiful spread. Oh, I know that's gorgeous. Very, very pretty. How to look after? That's what I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's just how it looks when it's starting mm, yeah. off, folks. All right, got some clouds hanging around here right now, and still have some uh, chilly temperatures. We've got this roller coaster that's going to be going on this week, kind of like we've had the past couple of weeks, which is not necessarily a bad thing. We had these fronts moving through every couple of days, but today we're going to be up to 72, and then push at 80 by Wednesday. However, bottom kind of drops out by the end of the week for a couple of days and then it goes right back up again and low temperatures basically do the same thing. We're going to be dropping down. Notice how Thursday was at 55, but the low 61. So the front's going to be moving through after midnight Thursday morning and we'll start off on the warmer side and then drop down throughout the day. But it is going to be uh, on the chillier side as we go in through most of the weekend and then we warm right back up. Right now we're at 43 degrees, some 30s in the hill country. With the cloud cover, we're not going to be dropping down all that much, if at all, in the next few hours. We'll have some sunshine thrown in. I think it's going to be very limited, especially the first portion of the day. We make it up to 62 at noon. Then we're going to be topping off today at 70. Again, leaning more toward the cloudier side throughout the rest of today, which is what computer models are indicating. They also want to try and scare up a, a sprinkle or two, but in the first portion of the day, which not really buying into that much, but Later on tonight, as the front works its way on through here or into the vicinity, that's when we're going to start seeing just a couple of sprinkles around the area. Rain, unfortunately, is not a big deal with this front. We start off with a lot of clouds, then we'll clear out in the afternoon. Now, one thing for sure, once that front moves on through, which is pretty much a, a dry line sort of a front, not a necessarily a cold front, because watch what happens with the dew points. They go up this afternoon, then here comes that front. Much drier air moves into the hill country, and the wind is really going to start to pick up in the early morning hours, and that's why the uh, wind advisory is posted for portions of the hill country. We will dry out significantly then throughout the day tomorrow. And there's that wind advisory goes into effect midnight up until noon tomorrow. Again, for the hill country with those winds are really going to be blustery. And on top of that, obviously, we have some very dry conditions. So you're going to have to watch out for the fire danger, obviously, as well. 62 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. And then a high temperature is going to make it up to 70 today. Again, plenty of clouds. Then we go into tonight. Couple of sprinkly showers late tonight and to start off the day tomorrow. Yeah, like I said, not a big deal as far as rain is concerned. We clear out very warm tomorrow, 75 degrees and then down to 53 on Wednesday. So a cooler morning, but even hotter in the afternoon, pushing at 80. Then the front moves through temperatures drop throughout the day on Thursday. Very windy again on Thursday and much colder. And then it stays pretty chilly through Saturday back to 70 by Sunday. But no, not a lot of rain. No, uh, a couple of showers around late tonight, early tomorrow, and that's as it looks right now about it. Perhaps next week, but you know, still a week away or so. Yeah, keeping a lot of eyes on that Valentine's Day forecast. Also, I saw a lot of people share a lot of pictures, images of their food from Super Bowl weekend. It was good stuff there. On um, yeah, I. <laughs> Too bad they didn't bring in any uh, yeah. any leftovers. <laughs> Just they're all gone. right. I promise you, I will make. Sure I, I I'm sure. No, 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 no. That's no. fine. I'm sure they were delicious, Stephen. <laughs> hey, at least we're doing a good they job. They sounded delicious. Yeah. Him into exactly, it, so. yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's 524 and 45 degrees. All right, up next, speaking of the Super Bowl, really excited about this. Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton, the original there, both back as Batman in the new Flash trailer. And we'll tell you when the classic Casablanca is returning to cinemas. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. Movie news now to start your week from the latest look at a film with multiple superheroes to the return of a Hollywood classic. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. Big Batman timelines going from Ben Affleck all the way back to Michael Keaton. Yeah. 
I'm Batman. We also get General Zod and a glimpse of Supergirl. The Flash zips into theaters June 16th. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world, she walks into mine. One of the most acclaimed films of all time is returning to theaters. A restored and remastered copy of Casablanca, which won Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Screenplay Oscars, will screen in participating cinemas on Sunday, March 5th, and Wednesday, March 8th. Check FathomEvents.com for locations and tickets. He's looking at you, kid. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right, really excited about that new Batman movie. Well, I say The Flash, but still very excited about the Batman. It's <laughs> It looks very cool. All right, yeah. it's 528 and 45 degrees. The Pentagon says another high-altitude device over North American airspace had to be shot down over the weekend. What lawmakers in Washington say we should now do. And it was a big night for superstars at the Super Bowl last night. We'll get a look back at all the big performances and secret appearances. F-16 fighter jets shoot down another mysterious object over an American airspace. What the commander of NORAD is saying about the situation this morning. Today after the Super Bowl, 45 degrees at 531. If you're up right now, congratulations. We <laughs> applaud you. Mike will have our forecast in just a bit. This should be a holiday. Should be a holiday. Well, I mean, like, we're still here at work. That wouldn't have just stopped us too. from yeah. being here. But I mean, yeah. I know <laughs> half of our newsroom people took vacation or the day off. Okay. And okay, by the way, I want to correct. Max planned this. He didn't uh, call in. Uh, he didn't did he call text in. you? Is that what he's watching? <laughs> no, he's, right he's coming in later. <laughs> he yes, is. He's yes. working a later, later shift. He yeah. just yeah. switched with yeah. Max being the. Right. The Eagles fan from yes, Philly. So. He probably fan. really needs this because we would totally rub it in his face. Oh, right. Man. Yeah. yeah. We, oh, I'm still going to rub it in his yeah. face when he gets here. Oh, I was actually kind of surprised reading that the Chiefs won after just watching the first half because yeah. the Eagles. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, and that Eagles offensive line, oh my right. wow. gosh, yeah. that yeah. was just like bulldozer, those guys going through there, pushing back the uh, defensive line yeah. of the Chiefs. But anyway, hi, back to the weather. Hi. It is a uh, <laughs> coolish morning. Grab a jacket before you head out the door. We do have some clouds hanging around here right now. And temperatures are, yeah, it's chilly out there. 43 degrees. We're a little bit below normal. Dew point stands at 37, and we've got a slight breeze out of the northwest. That's not going to be too much of a factor this morning. 41 in Balverde, a couple of some 30s out there in portions of the hill country. Stinson at 45 and 42 right now in Seguin. And we do have just a light amount of mold showing up. No mountain cedar from yesterday's count, so maybe we're finally done with the mountain cedar season. Just in time for the oak to start all that lovely yellow dust out there. Mostly cloudy, chilly this morning, and then we will have going to keep a lot of clouds around throughout the day. Some sunshine thrown on in. We are going to be warming up. Winds going to really start to pick up out of the southeast, pulling in a bit more in the way of humidity. That's going to help out with some showers late tonight and then in the overnight hours early tomorrow morning, one or two of those leftover showers. Then we're going to see more sunshine, just a few little leftover clouds, and it's really going to warm up and it's going to be very windy. We're going to be up in the mid 70s and winds are very, very strong tomorrow. Also, with the much drier air coming on in here, it's prompting wind advisories in parts of the hill country. We're going to show you that in a moment. Then we get even warmer on Wednesday. Another cold front moves on through here, and that's going to chill us back down again. So it's shorts and flip flops to heavy coats the end of the week. Big question is, any decent rain? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stephen Cavazos, Traffic Authority. Yes, sir. Anything going on on the roads? Yeah, quiet over here, Mike. And I think this is great for anybody that is having to head out the door in the next few moments. But hopefully, you're still at home enjoying that cup of coffee. Let's get a quick look at your morning commute. 64 Kitty Hawk really doesn't show a lot going on out there. Maybe one or two trucks getting on by. Too many want to Hildebrand. Don't forget, slow down before you approach that curb there. That We tend to see a lot of crashes uh, due to speed out there. So remember, drive safe as you get the morning rolling here. But thankfully, nothing is going on right now. I think a lot of folks are really taking the day, maybe enjoying the uh, post Super Bowl uh, morning. But right now, things are staying quiet if you do have to head out on the roadways. We do have plenty of construction, and we're going to get to that later on in this newscast. Lots to talk about there. But if you plan on traveling into San Antonio, there's no worry. Things are still in the green if you're coming in from Skeen on Long I-10 westbound, about 30 minutes to the Alamo City, a little more than half an hour along 87 northbound if you're traveling in from Lavernia. And for our friends down in Floresville should take you about 28 minutes to get into town here, but 35 north at Loop 410, 
Looks like a busier shot there on Transguide, but for the most part, the commute is off to a normal start. We know that things are going to pick up as we get closer to 6 a.m., but for right now, enjoy the drive to wherever your destination takes you. RJ Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. The U.S. military shoots down another unidentified object at President Joe Biden's order. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, according to the Pentagon, the craft was flying at 20,000 feet this time over Michigan's Upper Peninsula when the U.S. fighter jet took it down. This is a turning point where we need to discuss this is a threat and how do we respond to it. The Pentagon confirmed F-16 fighter jets neutralized a high-altitude device over North American airspace Sunday afternoon. We were cleared to engage the target in eastern uh, upper peninsula of Michigan uh, over land and ultimately down uh, the object at this point uh, about 15 nautical miles east of the upper peninsula in Lake Huron. Pentagon officials say the octagon-shaped object was not a military threat, but rather a flight hazard. This was the third one shot over the U.S. in as many days and the fourth in just over a week, and lawmakers want answers. I have real concerns about why the uh, administration is not being more forthcoming with everything that it knows. But part of the problem here is that the, both of the, the second and the third uh, objects were shot down in very remote areas. The Department of Defense says the objects shot down Friday and Saturday didn't resemble the suspected Chinese spy balloon taken down last week. Debris recovery efforts for those downed balloons are ongoing. The military and the intelligence are focused like a laser on first gathering and accumulating the information, then coming up with a comprehensive analysis of what went on before, what's going on now, and what could go on in the future. I'm John Lawrence reporting. In New Zealand, residents are bracing for lots of rain and flooding from Cyclone Gabrielle. It's been just two weeks since a record-breaking storm swamped New Zealand's largest city and killed four people. Much of Auckland has ground to a halt as train services were cancelled, libraries and schools were closed, and authorities asked people to make only essential trips. Air New Zealand is cancelling all domestic flights to and from Auckland through tomorrow morning, as well as many international flights. Two weeks ago, the country experienced the wettest day ever recorded Floodwaters killed four people, caused widespread disruptions, and left hundreds of homes unlivable. United States is now warning citizens to leave Russia as soon as possible due to the war in Ukraine. For the risk of arbitrary arrest or harassment by Russian law enforcement, U.S. Embassy in Moscow said it's important to leave in order to avoid the risk of wrongful detentions. The United States has repeatedly warned its citizens to leave Russia. The last such public warning was in September after President Vladimir Putin ordered a partial mobilization. Last month, the Federal Security Service said that Russia had opened a criminal case against a U.S. citizen on suspicion of espionage. Time now is 538 and a chilly start to our work week, 45 degrees. All right, pop star Rihanna made a grand return to the stage during the Super Bowl last night. Up next, we'll look back at all the special guests at last night's game, including Chris Stapleton, who sang the U.S. National Anthem. All right, and taking a look outside at live cam this morning as people get out and about. Day after the Super Bowl, Rihanna looks great. Chris Stapleton did a great job as well. We'll have the latest with your forecast coming up in just a little bit. All right, there it is. There's a live look at Kansas City this morning. Finally, I'm sure quiet now. Yeah. Home to the Super Bowl champions, Kansas City Chiefs. Looks like there's still some people you oh, know, yeah. out there. Absolutely, sure yes. They've been partying all night. Well deserved. Yeah, a 24-hour party there in uh, Kansas City for sure. So whether you won or lost, there's no denying that both sides, last night's Super Bowl was one of the most exciting that we've seen in recent history. I know it kept you up. It did. <laughs> you stayed I stayed up for I'm the whole right thing. Now, but yes, it did keep me up. <laughs> all right, so from the game itself to, of course, the halftime show and those high-profile and high-priced commercials, there were both winners and losers. Here's ABC's Will Gantz. An emotional night in Arizona. Tears for Jason Kelsey and Mama Donna after the Eagles loss. But after the Chiefs win, Travis getting that same support from mom. The night's big loser, the grass at State Farm Stadium. Players slipping and sliding all night long. And the biggest winners of the night, Rihanna fans, a.k.a. the Navy. Cara Delevingne on the sidelines in a shirt that said Rihanna concert interrupted by a football game. Weird, but whatever. 
Riri finding love high above the field at Super Bowl 57. Unlike the halftime shows in recent years, Rihanna's was a one-woman show. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Riri revealing a baby bump, simultaneously announcing a pregnancy and becoming the first pregnant woman to headline the halftime show ever. But back to the Kelseys, a rough night for brotherly support. One brother scores, the other brother having a snack. Enjoy. Jason Kelsey unbothered when Travis Kelsey scored for the Chiefs. Relatable, though. Game day really is all about the snacks and the ads. What are you doing here? Curse me if I'm Is this what you do when you say you're going to work all day? I, I gotta go, guys. Grab me a glaze. Ben and Jen for Duncan and more superstar commercials. Zoolander, a.k.a. Ben Stiller for Pepsi Zero. This is really, really ridiculously good tasting. Cher Horowitz, a.k.a. Alicia Silverstone for Rakuten. I used to be pretty clueless about shopping. Like, when I heard I could save by getting cash back with Rakuten, I was like, as if. And movie fans getting a sneak peek of the final Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm Star-Lord. And Indiana Jones. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Man, so many highlights there. I, you were doing a little Rihanna dance earlier. <laughs> You're thinking she might have done a little bit more, but it was still little, a great I, show. I, was, I respect what she mm -hmm, did. Yeah. But, you know, I, I'm, I like a show. Yeah, absolutely. A performance. Performance. Favorite commercial? Duncan. Yeah, that one's also. That's but the, the Clueless one was good, too. Yes. I was glad that they brought back Alicia Silverstone. Oh, look fantastic. Yeah, they look great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's 544 and 45 degrees. Up next, how a new study is linking calories to living longer. You know, just trying to tell us to eat <laughs> less and healthy. Okay. Not Super Bowl food, <laughs> Not guess, Super Bowl so. food after you feel that like yeah. Super Bowl like food hangover oh. the next oh, day. Yeah. Okay, uh, taking a look outside the roads, a calm morning, according to mm -hmm. Stephen Cavazos. He'll have our update and of course weather update when we come back. In your morning consumer headlines, of course, this comes after all the Super Bowl snacks, probably filled with lots of salt. If you want to live longer, you can try to consume less. A new study suggests people of ideal weight might be able to live longer by reducing the number of calories they eat. The study's author said that link has been known in laboratory animals for close to 100 years. This research found that people who reduce their caloric intake by 25% can slow the pace of aging in humans. All right, a newly released data shows December consumer prices rose from the month before instead of falling as previously thought. When the Bureau of Labor and Statistics released the raw data, prices were down one-tenth of a percent last month. But after the agency recalculated it for seasonal factors like weather events and holidays, the consumer price index went up one-tenth of a percent in December. Official January CPI numbers are scheduled to be released tomorrow. All right, we're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos. Pretty quiet morning, the morning yeah. after Super Bowl, Stephen. Yeah, you know, we were all talking about this earlier. We all stayed up late. We were talking about uh, some of the commercials that we were excited to see and some that we didn't get a chance to see. We'll talk about that in a little bit, a little bit later. But uh, we are taking a look at traffic right now, and something that I can see is things are moving along quite nicely there. A lot of pavement out there on the Trans Guide cameras, which means that empty roads are really what drivers can expect as we get this new week rolling here for you. Again, back here on the screen, not a lot to talk about, but as I mentioned, a lot of active construction that's still going to take place here. Let's talk about what's happening here off Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. We have barrier work that will actually start overnight, uh, and it does begin tonight. So keep in mind, this will take place up until Tuesday, February 14th, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Drivers can expect to see a single southbound main lane closure from Medina Base Road to Ray Ellison Boulevard. But as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we do have an update to our traffic closures on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. Just head over there for a full list of closures. Updated that a little bit earlier this morning, but back here, the morning commute is off to a quiet start. But as I mentioned, we were talking about this. I did not see a Little Mermaid trailer. And Steven I was, is very <laughs> upset. Listen, uh, I really <laughs> want to see that, so I, I hope that we will get that soon. I think it's going to be at the Oscars. Hopefully soon. You think? I think. You know, okay. ABC wants to do their thing. You're right. Of ownership. Right. Mm -hmm. We're just going to have to wait, Sarah. <laughs> and this is the live action Little Mermaid, right? 
I think well, so. Well, yeah. Hello? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm more caught up. Well, another one out there. Is there another one out there? When's it due out? May. Oh. Really? Yeah. In May. So it's we're. About time. Come on. Come on, Disney. Come on. Interesting. Mm hmm. Okay. Hey, uh, grab a jacket before you head out the door this morning. Uh, yesterday morning, you really needed one. We got down almost to freezing here in town, 33 degrees. And one of our regulars, Yvonne, good morning, Yvonne. Beautiful sunrise yesterday. Not as pretty this morning because we do have a lot of clouds. I really can't see them in this vantage point over there by the airport. Um, everything's dry out there. There are a couple of sprinkles, it looks like, trying to be picked up on radar well over along the Rio Grande. But the air is really, really dry. So it's more than likely evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. 40 at Bulverde, still holding a 43 here in town. 36 in Kerrville, 40 in Bandera as of right now. And uh, we're going to keep a lot of clouds around this morning. A little bit, a couple of squeezes of sunshine peeking on through here this morning. And we'll make it up through the 40s in through the 50s. And warm up quickly because the wind is going to continue to increase out of the southeast. And that's going to pull in warmer and somewhat more humid air. A little bit of sunshine thrown on in. 62 all already at noon. Then we will top off at 70 later on today. And again, a decent breeze out of the southeast, pulling in the humidity, which is going to help out with the cloud cover around here. And we again have a little bit of sunshine thrown in, basically leaning toward the cloudy side today. Then as we go into tonight, a couple of showers going to pop up around the area. Humidity is going to increase, so it won't be evaporating before it reaches the ground. But it's not obviously going to be a lot. I mean, this is just little bits here and there, and that's going to be the case tomorrow morning as well. So I wouldn't get really excited about rain chances. I think at best, if we do see anything, it's just going to be enough to make the roads damp and slippery. Then we see a lot more sunshine later on uh, late morning and afternoon hours. A couple of clouds still left over around here tomorrow. Now, wind advisory goes into effect midnight up until noon tomorrow for the hill country with the front moving on through here tonight. It's not necessarily a cold front, but it's just this dry line. And also the wind is really going to start to shift around out of the west to southwest. Very blustery and that occurs first obviously overnight in the hill country. And so that's why, again, that wind advisory and that means fire danger is also going to be very high up there in the hill country. It's also going to be breezy here in town as well, but just no wind advisory. 62 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies and high temperature today is going to make it up to 70. Again, a lot of clouds, a little bit of sunshine thrown on in. It will get breezier throughout the day. Front moves through tonight. Again, it's not a cold front because we're actually warmer in behind that tomorrow. But with that drier air, we will get cooler Wednesday morning, then even hotter in the afternoon, pushing it 80. Another big front moves through here. This is an actual cold front, so that'll knock temperatures down. We'll drop throughout the day on Thursday. Very windy again on Thursday, and we stay pretty chilly in through Saturday. Back to 70 by Sunday. Kind of all over the place, mm -hmm. minus some rain. Yeah, yeah, we could have used, you know, in the past few weeks, we've had a good shot of rain here and there, but not really this week. I have to recalibrate my mind right now because I was all about football. Now I got to think, oh, Valentine's Day is tomorrow. So Do not forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just got to get back in focus. Better get on the ball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the hard section's getting picked over. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, <laughs> time now, uh, 554 and 45 degrees on your Monday morning. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick 3783, three, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 9356, Fireball 0, Cash 5, 569, 2232, Texas Lotto, 4, 1927, 34, 35, and 50. Is your wife watching this one? <laughs> she no, said not, not. not till 6. 6 o'clock hour. Oh, not okay. Till 6. Hey, and Powerball 10, 23, 30, 54, 65, Powerball 11, Power Play 4. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up on GMA on this morning after the Super Bowl, we will have all the reactions to the big game and Rihanna's halftime show. And we'll hear what some of the players have to say about the game. Plus, the search for three objects the government shot out of the sky over the weekend, less than a week after taking down the Chinese spy balloon. Also, NFL star DeMar Hamlin 101 with Michael and his first interview after his terrifying on-field collapse. Those stories and much more coming up right here on GMA. All right, a lot of re-re talk this morning and still ahead in our next hour of GMSA. More Rihanna as her return to the stage brought out more than just fireworks for the Super Bowl halftime show. What we've learned about her surprise announcement. And Valentine's Day is almost here. We've got some creative, fun ways to surprise your partner. 
and taking a quick look at Transguide traffic cameras. Things looking pretty smooth out there. Stephen Cavasso's tracking the roadways for us. We'll be right back.